Hi all, I'm Ankur Gupta. Hope all of you are doing well. Welcome to Analytics School. In today's session, we will discuss how to explore numerical variables with PROC univariate. It is one of the important SAS procedure for running descriptive statistics as well as checking important assumptions of various statistical techniques such as normality, t-test, detecting outliers, etc. Despite various powerful features supported by PROC univariate, it is not as popular as PROC means. This particular procedure is mainly used by statistical analysts, data analysts and data centers. But I believe if SaaS developers are going to use PROC univariate, they might be able to provide better insight to the stakeholders. Let's discuss the main differences between PROC means and PROC univariate. PROC univariate can calculate extreme observations, whereas PROC means can't. PROC univariate supports normality test to check the normal distribution, whereas PROC means don't. PROC univariate can generate histogram, box plot, etc., whereas PROC means cannot. PROC univariate can conduct t-test, whereas PROC means cannot. Now let's do some examples using PROC univariate and explore its powerful features. The dataset which we are going to analyze today is shoes dataset and one can access it from the SAS help library. Let's run the PROC print statement and see how our data looks like. So you can see here there are seven variables and region, product and subsidiary are categorical variables where the store, sales, inventory and returns are numerical variables. Let's verify the data type by using PROC CONTENT statement. So you can see here there are 395 observations in this data set. There are 7 variables and you can see the data type here. Variable inventory is numerical, product is character, region is character, returns is numerical, sales is numerical, stores is numerical and subsidiary is character. Before we proceed further with PROC univariate statement, I would like to see how many categories are there in our categorical variable region and product. And for that, I'm going to use the PROC freak statement. Let's run the code. So there are no errors or warnings. And you can see these are the categories. For region, we have like Africa, Asia, Canada, United States, Western Europe. Whereas in product category, we have boot, men casual, men's dress, sandals, sleeper, sports shoes, women casual, and women's dress. Now let's do a basic example of PROC univariate and discuss the default output of PROC univariate statement. The procedure is very simple. PROC univariate data equal to SAS health dot shoes. The variable which we are going to analyze is sales. It is a numerical variable. And let's run the code now. Let's check a log window. So there are no errors or warning. And this is the default output. Moments, you can see count, mean, standard deviation, variation, variance, courtesies, skewness. In basic statistical measures, you can see mean, median, mode, and etc. Test for location is a one sample t-test and we will come to it later on. Then you can see the quantiles. And last but not the least is the extreme observation where you are seeing the top bottom five sales values and top five sales values. So this is the default output of PROC univariate. Now let's do a detailed example using PROC univariate procedure and explore its features. ODS graphics on with equal to 600. We will discuss in detail of each and every statement in PROC univariate procedure. Let me write the code first. PROC univariate data equal to SAS help dot shoes variable sales ID region histogram 
sales normal mu equal to estimate sigma equal to estimate Inset skewness vertices position equal to any probability plot sales normal. mu equal to est sigma equal to est inset skewness cortices title descriptive statistical analysis for sales now let's discuss about the statements which we have used here ods graphics ods graphic is itself a huge procedure and our focus is on univariate but let me give you a but let me give you some idea about what ODS graphics is if you are not aware of. With ODS graphics, a statistical procedure produce graphs as automatically as they produce tables. And graphs are integrated with tables and output. One can use ODS statement to control a statistical graph output as, as, as easily as your tabular output. Since PROC Univariate can also display graphs, and that is why we are using ODS graphics. PROC univariate data is equal to SAS helps dot shoes is basically calling what data set which we want to analyze. Variable sales, here we specify numerical variable or we can also specify multiple numerical variables to analyze. For example, we can call sales as well as inventory here and it will give you the descriptive statistics for the, both the variables. But right now we, are, we want to analyze only sales variable. And if we do not use var statement at all, then all numerical variable in the data sets are going to be analyzed. ID region, it specifies a variable used to label the five highest and five lowest value in the output. Then histogram, this particular processor, as I had mentioned earlier, has a capability of building plots. So here we are going to build histogram and we are going to build up the histogram on the numerical variable which we are going to analyze is sales and we are also calling other options like normal distribution and we want to have mu equal to estimate which is basically the mean and sigma is the standard deviation and in the inset we want to have the skewness and courtesis and we want to be at northeast position in our chart so basically inset places a box or table of summary called an inset directly into the graph then probability plot as i had mentioned that proc univariate can tell you the normality of a variable so probability plot or prop plot we can use to check whether the variable is normally distributed or not and then we have put up a title here descriptive statistical analysis of sales and now we can run the code and we are going to discuss about the output. There is one warning. Oh, so the spelling, you see, the warning has come up. Let me correct it. Here it is. Skewness. Re let's read on the code. Hopefully there is going to be no warning now. Since there are no warnings and errors, we can discuss the results now. 
Now let's analyze our output. When we look at our results, the output tells a lot about our data. The sample size is 395. The mean is 85,700.1671. Standard deviation, which is pretty interesting, 129107, and it is higher than the mean value. So a standard deviation basically tells us the average variability around the mean. Variance, it is just a squared value of a standard deviation. Skewness, skew, skewness statistic is 3.94. Since it is positive and way greater than zero, so the distribution is highly right skew. Generally, if the value is between minus 0.5 and 0.5, then the distribution is normally distributed. If the value is higher than one, then your, the distribution is not normally distributed. The Curtis's is 24.58. It is positive and way higher than zero. So we can say that the distribution is heavy tailed. Coefficient of variation is 150.64. This is the standard deviation expressed as the percentage of mean. The standard error of mean is 6,496. It measures the variability of the mean. Here you can see in basic statistical measures, median is there 38,912 and there is another property. If mean is greater than the median, then the distribution of the variable is right skewed. Whereas if median is more than mean, then the distribution is left skewed. You can see the variance as well as the range. Range is nothing else. It is uh, the difference between min and max value. Test for location is nothing else. It is one sample t-test and we will discuss about it in the end. Now let's discuss the quantile report. In the quantile report, SAS provide various reference point in the data set. We can see that the minimum, the min sales value is 325. The max sales value is 1,298,717. We are also given the percentile value such as 25th. 75th, 90, 95th percentile. In the extreme observation output, SAS specifies the five lowest sales value and five highest sales value. Remember that we specified region as an identifier in our code. Let me show you. Here we have mentioned ID as region. So you can see here, Pacific, which is at row number 197, it has a lowest value of 325. Whereas Middle East, which is at row number 188, it has a highest sales value of 1,298,717. And these are the row numbers in our data set. If we have not mentioned here ID region, then we are not going to see this region column. We are only going to see the observation, the record numbers and the values associated with it. Now let's review our graph. This histogram provides some additional information about sales variable. The bin identified with 60,000 has approximately 80% of the values associated with it. The inset box displays skewness and Curtis's value and the data is highly right skewed. And as we had mentioned, the value 3.94 which is positive and way greater than zero and that is how we were able to identify that this data set is right skewed. Before we discuss about the normality test, let's see the probability plot. The diagonal reference line here represents where the data values would fall if they come from a normal distribution. The circle represents the observation since the observed data values, i.e. the circle, does not follow the diagonal line in the graph, one can conclude that there is a significant departure from normality. So the distribution of a variable sales is not normally distributed. It has been concluded by the probability plot. And when we looked at a histogram also, this is not normally distributed. This is right skewed distribution. With the probability plot for sales, we can conclude that that the sales variable is not normally distributed. However, PROC univariate also produces a set of tables relating to assess whether distribution is normal or not. This is a table with three tests presented. It is very difficult to name them. Uh, Kolmogorov-Smirinov, 
Kramer von Mises and Anderson Darling test. In each case, the null hypothesis is that the distribution is normal. Therefore, high p values are desirable. All three tests have low p values, which is lower than 0 0.05. This is known as the alpha level of the test. Since the low p values imply that the distribution of sales is not normal. Hence, we can conclude that that our sales variable is not normally distributed. Now we are going to discuss the last output window of PROC univariate and that is test for location. Test for location is basically the one sample t-test and you can see here mu naught is equal to zero. This is our null hypothesis. What does it mean is that our null hypothesis is mean value of sales is equal to zero. An alternate hypothesis is that it is not equal to zero and we can override it also. We will see that example too. Now let's discuss about these three tests. A student t test is a parametric test which has an assumption that that our sales variable is normally distributed. If that assumption is not true, then we cannot use the parametric t test. Then we have to use non-parametric t test which is Wilcoxon signed rank t test. Since sales variable is not normally distributed, we will look at signed rank t test whose value is 0 0.001 which is way lower than 0 0.05 since it is less than 0 0.05 we reject the null hypothesis that the mean value of sales is equal to zero now let's say you want to test that a null hypothesis is mean value is equal to 100k and the alternate hypothesis is that the mean value is not equal to 100,000. How we can do that? What we can do here, we can select an option mu naught equal to 100k. Now let's run the code. Or we can use ODS test for locations. This is going to give us the output for test for location only. I made a mistake here. It is tests for location. So you can see by using ODS select option we have and then when we pass test for location we get an output for test for location only. Here a null hypothesis is that the, the, the mean value of sales is equal to 100k. And the alternate hypothesis is that it is not equal to 100k. Since our sales value is not normally distributed, we are going to look at Wilcoxon signed rank test and its value is less than 0 0.05. Hence, we can say that, that, that we reject the null hypothesis because the p value is less than 0 0.05 and mu is not equal to 100k. Let's say stakeholders want to analyze sales for Africa region only. How we can use PROC univariate and provide them the insight only for Africa region. It's very simple. Let me copy this code. And we are going to call the where statement going to call region which is a categorical variable and I'm saying where region equal to Africa title descriptive analysis for Africa region. Let me run these two code for you proc free and proc univariate and let me remove product from here now let's run this code africa region has a frequency of 56 and you can see here the sample size is 56 this is only for africa region and then you can provide all the analysis like what is the mean what is the standard deviation what is coefficient of variation the standard error test for location and the extreme values and you can use the detailed example 
where you can also create the histograms, probability plot and whatnot. Now let's say the stakeholders are saying, we do not need for Africa region, we need for all the regions. So basically we want to conduct this analysis for Africa, Asia, Canada, Central America, Eastern Europe, Pacific, South America, United States and Western Europe. It's very simple. We need to call the class statement. Let's run the code. And you can see here, region is equal to Africa and it has provided the analysis for you. This is region equal to Asia. It has sample, it has a sample size of 14 and these are the values. This is the result for Canada. It has a sample size of 37 and these are the moments and the basic statistical measure for Canada region. Similarly, if you'll go to the end, this is the analysis for Western Europe. By this example, we come to an end of this particular session. So that's it for today, guys. Take care and have a great day.